Hello everyone, Eloy here with another devlog. Last time I touched upon working with Bevy UI components and afterwards I jumped straight into trying to implement my main menu. Now the thing is, in Bevy there is nothing as a widget library and that's a problem in the sense that you cannot just, you know, pull out a, an input box and, and use it. So what I did, I started to build a, a widget library. So just to show you, um, here is my little test panel, which grew up a bit. Uh, I didn't intend to have so many, uh, but I just wanted to test uh, different uh, combinations of, of uh, effects, basically. So how the implementation starts uh, for, for such a thing, for, for a whole UI library when you have basically just containers. So the very first thing I created a, a, an, an abstraction on top of the interaction Bevy provides so that I can more targetedly uh, apply animations. The second thing I did is create an animation tracker for each of the bound components. I, I'm calling them bound components because the effects I'm creating actually binds interactions to effects, uh, basically interactions to a component's values, which we change um, based on the animation progress. And this is nothing special, you know, uh, in, in a modern computing society. You have, for instance, background color. You see, uh, this one is just without any animation. Uh, th these ones that don't actually have the animation component. So, uh, it's important to note that everything is opt-in here. So you have to opt-in to receive the events for the more spe specialized uh, interactions. You have to opt-in to handle animations on top of the interaction. And then you have to opt-in to control a, a certain property of a certain component. And this is a pattern that only has three variable things. Uh, so basically, the component that you are targeting, the property that you are targeting, and the type of the property that you are targeting. And if you have those three, you can extrapolate and basically just, you know, generate all of the, the fluff around it and make sure that you can work. So just to give you a, a quick list, uh, we have the background color, as I mentioned, you have the border color, the border size, which is nice. Um, but it doesn't do anything uh, if you can only interact with, with one property at a time. So it's important to note that the animation interactions that I created are specific to the interaction. So you can add multiple of them uh, to handle the different components with their own animation sequence. For now, I only have the same thing because of how the test library is, you know, organized, but you can uh, as uh, in as demonstrated here, so um, you you don't see it here because the border color and the um, the background color is actually the same, um, actually the same animation. But once you go to more complicated things, it begins to show. And this is just the hover, so the so the pointer enter and the pointer leave. You can actually click them uh, to trigger another another animation. And if you go you know, you, you, you cancel the click, you don't actually release the, the pointer over the button, you have a different animation. All three are optional, so that's why you have the header here saying which one is actually applied to the, so to the column, to the, uh, to the buttons in the column. Um, so these are the colors and the, the borders, and then I started to play around with values. Uh, so the mar margin is the same as the border size, so it's not really surprising that it works, but the height, is something that's a different kind of value in Bevy. So it's important to test those as well. And and, and this block is just to, to test the combinations. This will go away as I implement all of the inputs actually. And that, that brings us to the top of uh, the, the UI here, where I started to knock out actual, you know, usable widgets that are pretty common in, in, in every, any modern uh, application. So the very first thing I have here is a checkbox without a label. You can check it, you can uncheck it. Um, important to note that I'm currently only focusing on implementing the widgets in a self-contained manner. That doesn't mean that you cannot interact with it. Um, I will show you uh, in a minute 
basically, once you build checkbox, you can add more components to it and you can mark them and you can, you know, apply your own logic afterwards, but it doesn't auto bind to anything yet. That's also something I plan to do just for the sake of completeness to, to prepare a UI based on reflection, similar to what we have seen in the inspector EGUI. But for that, I need all of the, the input types first. And the checkbox is the most simple one. Um, and then the next simple one is the radio buttons. This one is a standalone radio button. You don't usually see these um, because they are not very useful. Radio buttons are usually grouped and the rule for them is that you can select one and then you cannot, you cannot unselect them anymore. And you can only select one at most. However, uh, in my experience, sometimes you want radio buttons that you can unselect as well, which means that selecting nothing is is a valid option. So uh, anyway, I <laughs> took the liberty of, you know, implementing that you can uncheck it, but only when I'm holding control in this case. And and then for the the group, actually, I cannot unselect it because it's an option. I made it optional to, to be able to unselect a specific uh, um, value. And the next thing uh, that I wanted to implement was the drop downs. But you have to understand that to implement drop downs, you need multiple things. So first of all, what is a drop down? It's a button that has an icon uh, with a text. And if you click it, it opens a panel with options, options that you can select. And the list of options is a panel that's floating, and it usually has a scroll bar. If you have many options, you will need it. So to make a drop down, you actually need a slider first that you can later on make into a scroll bar. And once you have a scroll bar, you can uh, implement a panel. Well, you can implement the scroll bar or the panel. It doesn't matter. But you need a panel um, and the scroll bar to make a scrollable panel. And then you have to make a panel that's actually floatable, quote unquote, so you can uh, position it absolutely in the in the UI next to your button. And that makes up the rest of the drop down. But to do that, uh, you actually have to first implement uh, drag interactions because uh, yeah, as I have shown you, uh, my flux interactions that I, I, I created do not have the drag interactions. Why? Because you don't usually need them not in every element. So I made it optional. You can optionally put it on something uh, that will react to being dragged. And this is the slider, basically. Uh, well, an implementation of it is um, my slider, uh, which is this one. Once I have a good implementation of this one, I will move to, to the scroll bars and the scrollable panels and then, you know, put together the, put together the drop down. After the drop down came text. We have no text input, nothing. We have text, but the text is already made in a way where you have the text sections and each of the sections are formatted by themselves. So they have the font type and the size and the color, which means we have the ability to implement selections in text. But anyway, circling back to, to how to do an interactive things that you have seen there. So how to make a background colored. And it's really simple. I think uh, it's this much code. Basically, I have my own bundle to add the tracked interactions, which is actually the stopwatch I talked about and the, um, the flux interaction. And then the interactive background, which has three properties, the highlight, the press and the cancel. These are colors. So what color do we uh, lerp into when we highlight, when we press, when, when we cancel a press? And then this, the third one here is the animation. This actually creates the necessary components to animate um, based on the stopwatch that we have in the flux interaction. This is, this is a separate thing. There is a system that specifically updates and maintains the animated interaction. And the other thing that I want to show you is how to create 
an interactive background. The interactive background is a really simple thing. It's two lines of code and one line here. This is because it's macro magic. So you can actually have a look at uh, the macro, which is big. No, okay. It's not big. It's a hundred something, 150 lines of code. It's not much. Um, the, the, the What you don't see is the actual type magic that goes in the background to make sure that everything is working. And now that you have seen how to make a, an interaction, I will also show you how to, or how I did uh, using, for instance, an input widget. An input widget is as simple as this. So we just have a checkbox, spawn, give it a parent, and then label optionally. The radio buttons, same. Uh, the, this is this is the single radio button, by the way. There is a radio group as well, where you can give it the group of things. Uh, so the, the items actually. And then slider, same thing. Uh, you just spawn with a parent and then give it a name. And I plan to keep uh, using this uh, form. And the, the neat part of this is that you can still add children to it, you can still insert components to it, and you can still capture it and take the ID as well. So this is uh, this is intended to be part of uh, the UI building process that Bevy already has with the, you know, parents, bond, with children, etc. This falls into it really well. And uh, I'm going to continue uh, in this manner. And uh, for the next one, drop down panels, um, input text, and if I'm ever done with that, um, I'm, I will, uh, you know, refactor the little um, UI test we have here. And that's it. This part of the devlog will have a part number and then, you know, it will have multiple parts, probably for a while. I don't want to drag, drag it out, so I will just go ahead and, you know, chop chop, uh, create all of the, uh, the inputs that I can think of. We'll see how far I, I will take it. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time as well. Have fun. Ciao, ciao.